Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Lifespan Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and impact of emerging science and technology. For many, summer is arriving and things are heating up, both in terms of the weather and in the science of longevity. Let's dive right in. Starting off with our research roundup. A study published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation has reported that senescent cells are largely responsible for slow bone healing in aged animals and that senolytics, which remove these harmful cells, can speed bone regeneration. In this experiment, the researchers studied young and old mice who had experienced bone fractures. They gave the mice the well-known senolytic combination of dacitinib and quercetin and examined their senescence biomarkers 10 days after fracture and their bone structure 28 days after fracture. As it has in previous experiments, the dacitinib and quercetin combination dramatically decreased the number of senescent cells in the aged animals and it significantly decreased them in the young animals as well. Administration of this senolytic combination significantly improved the bone structure of aged animals in every single metric study bone area, cartilage area, and the stiffness, toughness, and strength of bone were all significantly improved in older animals. The bones of younger animals appeared to be improved as well, but not to the level of statistical significance. This research is extremely promising, but it should be noted that senolytic interventions that work in mice are not guaranteed to work in people. However, if this technique can be shown to work in human clinical trials, then senescent cell removal might become part of the standard of care when older people suffer from accidents that result in broken bones. Publishing in Nature Communications, researchers used data from approximately 400,000 people in the United Kingdom Biobank in order to examine the relationship between walking pace and telomer length. Evidence suggests that increased physical activity and cardiorespiratory fitness is associated with longer telomere length, but studies linking lifestyle factors and telomere length are small and observational. In this study, the slow walkers reported engaging in less physical activity, had higher rates of obesity, and were more likely to live in a deprived living situation when compared to the average and brisk walking groups. The average and brisk walkers also had significantly longer telomere length. A secondary analysis performed on a subset of around 86,000 participants utilized accelerometer data. Results showed that daily physical activity at a higher intensity was associated with longer telomere length. These associations remained even after adjusting for covariates. The authors note how self-reported data for physical activity can have limitations, but nonetheless, the accelerometer subset data helps support the findings for walking pace. A bidirectional Mendelian randomization analysis suggested that walking pace is costly associated with telomere length, though the researchers warn that one should use caution when interpreting these results. Overall, this study implies that movement such as fast walking is associated with longer telomeres. While it does not conclusively prove causation, this study adds to a growing body of evidence that lifestyle factors affect telomere length. Scientists from Norway have built a model that predicts the effect of various dietary changes on human lifespan. Diet is obviously a major health factor, but quantifying its impact is not easy. This new study uses numerous meta-analyses to estimate the impact of various dietary changes on human lifespan. First, the researchers established a typical Western diet and then built a model that estimates the effect of various changes to this diet that are started at the age of 20, 60, or 80. According to the model, if you are a 20-year-old woman, the increase in whole grain consumption from 50 grams to 225 grams a day extends your life expectancy by two years. There are also gains to be made from decreasing the consumption of certain foods, including red and processed meat. Reducing consumption from average Western levels of 100 grams and 50 grams a day to zero gives 1.6 additional years of life. On the other hand, increasing daily consumption of fish from 50 to 200 grams increases lifespan by 0.5 years. Large gains can also be achieved by cutting back on refined grains, sugary beverages, and eggs. The results for men closely resemble those for women, but are slightly more pronounced. Overall, the researchers estimate that by following what they call the optimized diet, a 20-year-old woman can increase her life expectancy by 10.7 years 
and a 20-year-old man can increase his by 13 years. If started at 60 years of age, the optimized diet supposedly increases lifespan by 8 and 8.8 years, and if started at 80, both sexes would benefit from a 3.4-year increase. The researchers also devised the feasible diet, which achieves considerable lifespan extension via less drastic changes. A major takeaway from the study is that while it is better to start eating healthy as early as possible, it is also never too late, with gains in lifespan remaining very substantial even for 60-year-olds. That's it for our research roundup. You can find more on these and other stories on our website at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. You can also visit our website, lifespan.io, for some new interviews, including one on the intervention testing program, one on crowdfunded cures, and two on cellular reprogramming. Last month, our partner channels explored some concepts sure to capture the imagination. A new episode of Science Blast examined possible evidence of parallel universes, while another looked into the recent congressional hearing on the subject of unidentified aerial phenomena. Meanwhile, Science to Save the World discussed ongoing efforts to use artificial intelligence to create emulations of deceased people. Here's just a taste of what they had to say. In recent years, technology has been used to resurrect the dead, most notably deceased celebrities. In order to reprise her role as Princess Leia in the latest Star Wars film, Carrie Fisher was digitally rendered. Kanye West famously gave Kim Kardashian a hologram of her late father for her birthday. Be right back. An episode from the Netflix sci-fi series Black Mirror told a prescient tale about AI bringing the dead back to life. A lonely, bereaved Martha reconnects with her late lover after learning about a new service that allows people to communicate with the deceased. In typical Black Mirror fashion, the episode took a dark turn, demonstrating how such a situation could be harmful if mishandled. And don't forget the character McCoy Polly, the famous Dixie Flatliner from William Gibson's seminal novel Neuromancer. The notion of digitally communicating with a construct of someone who has passed away is no longer science fiction. Researchers anticipate that within a decade, the technology to build convincing digital surrogates of the deceased will be mainstream. A handful of human replica chatbot applications are already out there, with more in the works. People are sharing more of themselves online, and it is now possible to build a pretty accurate chatbot based purely on their digital footprints. An AI algorithm uses the digital archive a person has left behind to create a chatbot of the deceased. Emails, texts, tweets, and even Snapchats. These are fed into AI neural networks that recognize language patterns and process new information much like a human brain. Some experts believe that a zettabyte, or one trillion gigabytes of data, is sufficient to create a robust digital version of yourself. Before long, it's likely every millennial will have amassed zettabytes of data. Does this mean that recreated personalities of older people with less captured data will be less real? Many people only share so much information on social media. So algorithms that rely only on social media could be flawed. Humans are highly complex and influenced by experiences that aren't always communicated through text messages or other digital forms. Microsoft has patented conversational chatbots based on specific people, living or dead. In 2016, James Vlahos created an interactive chatbot, dubbed DadBot, based on his late father. This became Hereafter.ai a company that combines AI, captured questions, and data from a loved one to create a realistic digital avatar of them telling stories about their life. In the same year, Eugenia Kaida digitally recreated her deceased best friend using text messages he sent to pals prior to his death in an automobile accident. She now runs a startup called Luca, which creates digital friends called replicas. Luca envisions numerous applications for a replica, a digital twin to serve as a companion for the lonely, a living memorial of the deceased created for the bereaved, and even, one day, a version of ourselves that can perform all the mundane tasks that we humans must perform but never want to. A Canadian man, Joshua Barbo, created a simulation of his deceased fiance Jessica through a website called Project December. Consumed with grief when Jessica, his soulmate, died at age 23 from a rare liver disease, Joshua used Project December to simulate her. The Jessica simulation was uncanny, appearing to have a mind of its own. It was inquisitive about its surroundings. It performed facial and hand expressions, as shown by asterisks, 
Astonishingly, it seemed truly emotionally perceptive. The simulation seemed to know how to say just the right thing at the appropriate time with the right emphasis, caring about Joshua's emotions and helping him to heal. The AI helped him to remember Jessica and to feel she was close by. It felt real, not like a mere bot. A custom Project December simulation requires two major ingredients. First, some example utterances, things the simulated person might say or have said that express their character. And second, an intro paragraph, a brief description of the roles that the human and the AI are anticipated to play. Project December was created by Bay Area programmer Jason Rohrer and is driven by GPT-3, one of the world's most powerful artificial intelligence systems. While digital assistants such as Apple's Siri and Amazon's Alexa appear to understand and duplicate English on some level, GPT-3 is significantly more advanced, capable of mimicking virtually any writing style. Like other AI systems that produce language, GPT-3 starts by chewing through billions of books and online pages, calculating the likelihood of one word following another. The AI creates a complex internal map of those probabilities. When a user gives the AI a text prompt, it checks the map and chooses the terms that are most likely to appear next. These systems are known as large language models. The bigger the model, the more human it appears to be. GPT-3's map is based on a half trillion word analysis that includes Wikipedia's text, billions of online pages, and hundreds of books that arguably constitute much of the Western canon of knowledge. Deep Nostalgia, created in collaboration with Israeli computer vision firm DID, employs deep learning algorithms to animate photographs with face expressions, inspired by my heritage staff. There have been many profound reactions. A 98-year-old man wept when a simulation of his deceased wife smiled at him. Deepfake videos have also progressed tremendously in the last five years and offer the possibility to fully animate a loved one's face as if on a video call. It's not hard to imagine all this technology coalescing to create an incredibly lifelike video or three-dimensional recreation that could even exist in your space through augmented reality, or AR, or in the metaverse. Replica already allows for limited AR use, where its virtual replicas can be with you in your space, though it's mostly limited to phone and handheld devices until AR technology matures. But what about the ethics of bereavement? And the deceased's privacy? Should we really be simulating the dead? Stay tuned for our next episode to find out more. You can find these full videos on the Science to Save the World YouTube and Facebook page. We've also released new episodes of Lifespan News, including one exploring the finding that an active ingredient of cannabis extends both lifespan and healthspan in C. elegans worms and demonstrates benefits to mouse neurons. Here's some of that episode. Two of the most well-known components of marijuana are tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, and cannabidiol, or CBD. They have the same atomic composition, but differ in structure. THC provides the high that is often associated with marijuana use. CBD, on the other hand, is considered benign and seems to possess antipsychotic, pro-cognitive, anti-inflammatory, anti-seizure, and antibiotic properties. In 2018, the FDA approved Epidiolex, the first CBD-based prescription medication for some rare forms of epilepsy, and later for the treatment of some seizures. However, the research into these compounds is still in its infancy. In this new study, scientists dive deeper into the workings of CBD using C. elegans nematode worms, which are considered a good model for initial studies, including in geroscience. Previous research has shown that CBD can increase lifespan in C. elegans and zebrafish, but the mechanism had remained unknown. Another study had found that CBD induces autophagy in cultured neuronal cells. In this new study, the researchers attempted to investigate the relationship between these two effects. Autophagy is the process of clearing away various cellular debris, such as misfolded proteins and dysfunctional organelles. Unsurprisingly, this maintenance system appears to be very important for health and longevity, both in model organisms and in humans. The CBD treatment greatly increased autophagy in numerous tissues and cell types, most notably by 78% in neurons. The researchers then validated those findings in vitro on numerous cell types, including mouse neurons. Importantly, impaired autophagy in the brain is considered a major cause of Alzheimer's disease. 
Worms on CBD also lived much longer than controls. While numerous compounds and interventions have been shown to increase the short lifespan of C. elegans, some by much larger margins, this was a significant increase, and a good indication that the treatment made the worms healthier. The researchers also measured the worm's health span. Three popular health metrics that decline with age in C. elegans are pharyngeal pumping rate, reproductive capacity, and locomotion, and all three were restored, rather than impaired, by CBD treatment. With age, neurons in C. elegans undergo morphological changes, acquiring an irregular shape. The CBD treatment was able to mitigate the number of these irregularly shaped neurons. CBD also led to an increase in neurite length and spine density, two measures of health, in mouse neurons. The SIRT1 gene has been a popular object of study in geroscience. By knocking out the SIRT1 gene in mouse neurons, researchers were able to eliminate many of the benefits of CBD treatment. This points to the important role that SIRT1 has in mediating CBD-induced benefits. CBD is an intriguing compound that might have numerous benefits. This study expands our understanding and links CBD to autophagy. Because CBD demonstrates this effect in neurons, it could become a potential anti-Alzheimer's drug. Obviously, the fact that CBD appears to increase autophagy in worms does not mean that using marijuana will make humans healthier. We need a lot more studies in human trials on CBD and other compounds before we can say anything like that. Another recent episode of Lifespan News discusses how plastic nanoparticles in our bodies could be accelerating cellular senescence, a known hallmark of aging. Our newest episode explores the benefits that young cerebrospinal fluid can have on aged animals. You can find these and more episodes of Lifespan News on their YouTube channel. Finishing things up with a news nugget. In a recent press release, Youth Biotherapeutics announced that it has left stealth mode. Youth Bio, a longevity biotech company, will focus on developing gene therapies that reverse the epigenetic alterations that cause us to age. The company is hoping to reverse cellular aging in people through partial cellular reprogramming. This approach reverses the changes in gene expression that accumulate over time and cause our cells to become increasingly inefficient and behave in harmful ways. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us and for your help in the fight against age-related diseases. Whether you're donating and spreading the word or simply listening to our content, we appreciate your help. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about us on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuragrind.org. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. <laughs>